God's Word teaches us the eternal plan of redemption was in the heart of God from before the very beginning. Even before the foundations of the world, as soon as sin entered the earth through Adam and Eve, God gave them a promise of a deliverer. God continued to manifest this salvation plan throughout the times of the Old Testament, culminating with the birth of Jesus. He became that promised deliverer. In Acts 1.8, Christ's final command is given to be my witnesses to the end of the earth. Acts is an amazing testimony of God building His church of believers in Christ, one city at a time, all over the world. Community development, evangelism, and discipleship are all being carried out by the universal body of Christ. Because God preordained this eternal plan of redemption before the foundations of the earth, and salvation and redemption has been the center of His plans and desires for mankind ever since. Through FBC, God continues to carry out the same type of spiritual genealogy we see in the Book of Acts, both around the world and within our own community. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, our global missions involvement brought us into contact with a few initial church planters and leaders on three different continents, which profoundly changed how we do missionary work. It brought us back to the roots of the Book of Acts. We partner with key leaders in their churches, train and equip them to do the work of the ministry in their own town and within their own culture. The story of the three continents begins in Africa. God led us to meet Julius Mergor in Kenya in 1986, which has led to working directly with three main pastors who are currently training pastors and church leaders of over 200 other churches. Additionally, in South Africa, God led us to partner with Fred Tempe's, which led us to Cedric and Pauline Chippendale, which led to the discipleship of college students ministering back in home locations, and then to working with Michael and Bernadette Boone, and Nandu and Debbie Lunda, and about 300 pastors in Congo. In Togo and Benin, a partnership with Pete and Carolyn Bittner led to working with 60 Lokpa pastors in their churches, Simon and Ruth Yako, and Joshua and Melissa Yakubu. These connections then led to 40 Chichewa churches in Malawi and Mozambique, equipping Nigerian missionaries working in all the African French-speaking countries, and an invitation to partner with 170 Ekwa churches in Chad. In Asia, God first connected us with James Shankar around 1985 in the northeast part of India, which has led to working with his son Reuben. Kalapahar Bible Church, and an orphanage. Also in India, God brought us into partnership with Joy George, the president of Asian Christian Academy and the House of Joy Orphanage. Our ongoing connection with ACA then led us back to Africa and a connection with a man named Philip Ochian in Kenya, which led to the sprouting of his church in Migori and to the growth of his orphanage. That also led us to develop a connection with William Kisa and the Webuye Church, which helped spread even more interaction with other pastors and churches in neighboring communities. Asian Christian Academy also sparked another great connection into the continent of Asia. This time, it led us to an Indian man named Saji Abraham. Our relationship with Saji led to working with Hoser Bible Church and their church leaders Hansen Manova and Augustine Arumyagam along with the Todagiri Church, a church in Namakal, and now the beginning of working with another 30 or more pastors in a completely new area of India. A connection with Jai Pandi in the north part of India led to working with Jai's orphanage, Man Prasad Betwal in his church, Surja Tamang in his church on the Bhutan border, and Gopal Manali in his church and school in Nepal. Gopal is now in the process of planting 10 other churches and meeting monthly with 60 other Nepali pastors to equip them with the chronological teaching. In an unnamed Asian country in the north, God has led us to work with a missionary couple, as well as a man named Joseph, 
a national pastor who has been translating all of our chronological lessons into the local language, teaching them to 500 people in a weekly Bible study conducted online, as well as seeking to pass them along to other pastors. In Thailand, God connected us with Scott and Annette McManigal, missionaries who planted a northern Po Korean tribal church in the village of May Pei. This church has planted four other churches, which have led many to Christ in some of the surrounding villages. They have since joined a large Baptist association of Korean churches in Thailand and have had many opportunities to help equip the pastors of some of those other churches. In Pakistan, God has brought us into contact with Peter Raka. Peter pastors a church, but also trains and equips pastors and church leaders of 21 other churches in Pakistan. The third region of our partnerships brings us to Latin America, where God first brought us into contact with Wilson Campoverde in 1991, who at the time was a professor at the Rio Grande Bible Institute. God used Wilson to bring us into partnership with Raul Santana in Mexico City, which has led to partnering with many pastors and churches through the years. Some of our key partnerships are with Fernando and Maria Navarro and their church in Chiapas, as well as Raul's son, Rafael and Mirna Santana and their church in Guadalajara. Our connection with Wilson also led to working with Oscar and Stella Garza and their church in Donna, Texas, as well as with Juan and Tirsa Delgado and their church in Cuenca, Ecuador. Juan travels the mountains of Ecuador to train and disciple over 50 Quechua pastors. Lastly, here in the U.S., God connected us with David Hawkins in Seward, Alaska, who worked with the Seward Siemens Mission, which led us to Scott Johnson. This organization seeks to evangelize and disciple the international crew members of the cruise ships that run each summer in Alaska. We help keep the mission stocked with foundational Bible teaching lessons in many of the different languages that are spoken by such a diversity of people who come from all over the world to work as the crew on these ships. God also led us to partner with Curtis and Michelle Thompson. Michelle is the daughter of FBC members Dave and Sandy Glenny, and she and Curtis minister together at Reborn Community Church in inner city Chicago. This church is having a profound impact there in Garfield Park, as God uses them to provide a manifestation of the love of Christ to people in one of the most dangerous places to live in America. It is humbling to watch God use Fellowship Bible Church to assist in the development of His global church. What an amazing privilege and blessing it is to be a part of God's ongoing eternal plan of redemption by sharing His message of grace to the world. From eternity to eternity, our God remains faithful.